Yo, what's good, y'all? So yeah, I'm gonna be talking about my first time in Africa, man. Crazy experience. And when I say Africa, I mean the continent of Africa, not the country. It's not a country. Surprisingly, a lot of people still think that. I ain't realized that until I started telling people I was going. I'm like, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I mean, but like as a black person in America, I thought it was extremely important to go back to Africa. I came across a study abroad opportunity that essentially made my first trip to Africa more meaningful than if I would have went, you know, like stayed in a hotel and did all the tourist stuff. Cause when I went, it was more of a real experience cause I was out there. I stayed with two different host families, one in the city of Dakar and then one in a village called Awar. That's like North Senegal, like near the border of Mauritania. It was definitely aligned with my journey and everything I had going on at the moment. So it was like a no brainer for me to go. I'm gonna briefly talk about like all of the requirements beforehand. It wasn't really much cause I have a US passport. So you could kind of go anywhere with that. But yeah, preparing for the trip. Me, I always like to be as prepared as possible, but at the same time, I didn't want to overpack. But as much as you prepare, like there's always going to be something that you wasn't prepared for or things that you aren't ready for. But the goal is to minimize those type of problems, like prepare for as much as you possibly can. I bet. So I got a few questions. So packing tips. Again, I stayed in a village. So like, if you're going to go to a village, bring some bug spray, go into Senegal, don't wear your nice shoes. You're going to get sand all in them. Luckily, I had like a pair of vans and some hiking shoes. So I just wore those and some sandals. So like, don't bring your, don't bring your designer. None of that, bro. That's probably it for packing. Now, me personally, when I travel, I do not like waiting. I don't like long lines. So before I left, I got myself global entry and PS, PSA, TSA pre-check. And basically it's like 90 or hundred dollars. My credit card covered it. So that was the main reason I got it. I flew out of JFK. I went through the TSA pre-check line and like less than five minutes like i went through security so fast like i forgot to take my film on my bag so some of the film pictures might be messed up i'm gonna make another video on that too y'all see this nice little film holder this was in my bag with all my film in it there's nothing in here now but i left this in my bag because i went through tsa so fast and then coming back into the country i had global entry so that took literally like 30 seconds as soon as i got off the flight the only thing is like you gotta wait for baggage if you have a check bag which could take forever at least you don't gotta wait in that a customs line now i got it because i'm gonna be traveling a lot internationally and domestically it'd be good for me to have tsa pre because tsa lines be crazy especially at jfk the last time i was at jfk i went to detroit that tsa line was insane bro also included with my credit card was airport lounge access so leaving jfk i went to both of the lounges in the terminal got some food in the dakar airport i also went to the lounge got some food i tried to sneak some drinks on the plane like they have some i'm gonna show you a picture there's like this there's like this fruit drink that i had out there it was like coconut juice and mango juice they had that at the lounge and i tried to take like 10 of them but um for some reason at the dakar airport bro like when you first get there there's a metal detector and then you go to check your bag and then there's another security line and then i went in the lounge stayed there and when it was time to board our flight they were checking us again i don't understand but they didn't let me take the juices but i had like a heineken at the bottom i don't even drink beer but i took one because it was at the lounge but they didn't take the heineken i'm like that don't make sense, bro. Thankfully, my flight was direct. It was only like six, seven hours. I slept half the time anyway. They gave us food. Usually, I don't have problems with Delta. Hopefully, it stays that way. As soon as I landed, man, it was just like, first of all, it was hot. Over here in New York, it's getting a little warmer, but in December, when I left, it was like, bro, it was brick outside. In Senegal, it was like 80, 90 degrees every day, man. I wish I could go back, because right now, it's getting warmer in New York, but it's still a little chilly. Seeing the motherland for the first time was just like, it's something you gotta experience in person. I can't really explain how it felt. Sand everywhere. I mean, it's paved roads in most areas, but like Senegal is in the Sahel. So it's like mostly sand. So yeah, when we first landed, we met our coordinators of the study abroad program, but he went in another taxi and I was with another student. He spoke zero French, no Wolof, no Pilar like nothing bro so we stayed in we stayed in a neighborhood called yaf um it's like on the north kind of coast of the car but man on the way there i didn't really get like good footage of the way they drive but they drive crazy out there bro like worse than new yorkers they just be switching lanes no blinkers they be driving like this close to each other like they be mad motorbikes swerving in and out kind of like the, the delivery people but worse and on motorbikes not e-bikes motorcycle type 
and then the traffic is also terrible like whenever it's rush hour traffic is insane like unfortunately they don't have that many transit options so you kind of have to rely on either taking a taxi the bus or like getting on a motorbike which we couldn't really do so but yeah man like it was a lot of different stuff i experienced when i first got there it was just like seeing the animals in the street just walking that was different to me like i never seen that being from new york like you don't really barely see animals as is but like walking in the street with you was just something different they had horses goats chickens donkeys just just walking the street the whole family i was with in the city they had um chickens and goats like in their front yard in the village they had like cows chickens goats baby goats yo the baby goats is hilarious like they be jumping all over the place but let me get into the questions real quick. So the questions was, what did I eat? We ate a variety of different things, but what I ate a lot was chibujin, dibujin, chibujin, one of those. But it's basically like rice and fish with some vegetables. That's like their national dish. We had that damn near every day for lunch. I mean, it was good, but like having it every day was kind of like, yo, I need a burger or something. For breakfast every day, it was bread with chocolate or butter and coffee or tea and i mean like you could eat a whole bunch of bread over there because it's like freshly baked and it's not like they don't got all the preservatives the u.s food has so what are some of the things i liked over there one i love the weather the beach was amazing water was like extremely clear i like how slow the environment is like even though like the drivers are kind of like crazy in terms of your day-to-day -day, you're not rushing to go to work are you like you know the fast-paced new york city like you're not in that type of flow i like the nature the art scenery it's just a beautiful country another thing i like was the hospitality like the host family i was with they treated me like like i was a part of the family like and the hospitality bro the hospitality over there is crazy it's like they treat everybody like like family and it's how it should be because like over here in the states it's more individualism so it's like everybody focusing on themselves they don't really care about other people over there it's more there's a sense of collectivism community they value family um so they spend a lot of time together lunch is usually eaten like in a circle from a big bowl everybody eats together they usually spend time together like watching tv talking chilling in the living room hospitality is way better over there but the thing is being from new york you're not even used to hospitality like that because a new yorker going to like atlanta my first few times in atlanta for example they got southern hospitality like in the south they'd be like you know good morning how you doing yes ma'am no ma'am they actually engage in conversation but like you say if you look at somebody in new york they're like yo bro why are you looking at me like it's always hostility the water situation most water you got to drink bottled water especially like if you're not from there you can't you can't drink like water from the well like the groundwater you'll get sick water i had to brush my teeth with drink had to be in the bottle so you had to carry these big ass like plastic bottles bathroom in the village was outside so i had to shower outside and most of the toilets were like squat toilets which are actually better to get all that out your bowels like squatting is actually better than like the common american toilet but it was different and i adapted to it easily because you know i was living in the moment so you can't just not take a shower or not use the bathroom and then washing up you kind of had to heat up some water water in the bucket the cup you know i was kind of used to that already so it was like that wasn't really a surprise doing that when it's cold outside bro it's like your body is wet the wind is blowing on you and now you just that's that's annoying they're huge on football not american football not the super bowl messy football another question did we have a tour guide so we had a tour guide when we went to gory island which was one of the islands where enslaved africans were taken before they were shipped to the u.s against their will and never brought back so making that connection and going back to africa was like extremely important but yeah we had a tour guide on that island and he kind of showed us around but like the city nah we kind of just explored it on our own so really the study abroad program kind of consisted of service learning so we were out there uh we made a food forest so we were planting trees mango trees and lemon trees we helped create like a library system in the schools over there so we provided the kids with some books some soccer balls or some footballs as they call it we also helped construct a food shelter basically a structure to kind of hold all of the plants and um, trees and stuff to protect it from weather and the environment animals 
overall it was an amazing trip man i'm definitely going to be going back to africa so many countries i want to go to like Tanzania, Egypt, Somalia, Ethiopia, South Africa, Kenya, Congo, Ghana, Nigeria. I know in December they got some in Ghana. It's like a, it's some type of festival. I'm gonna see if I could be out there for that because they be lit out there. But yeah, like I was saying about the, like everything is slow paced. Like you get more time to be still, be present in the moment. Like you got time to sit down and reflect. You got time to sit down and read. You don't really notice your blessings until you don't have easy access to them so like in the u.s phone service is great but you don't realize how good it is until you you out there and you don't got no type of service which is a good thing at times because it's like you know it forces you to not be glued to your phone all the time access to running water that is safe to use like in any type of facet so when we arrived to the village in awar like everyone in the village came out and they had like a festival <laughs> nice warm welcome definitely to change an environment like help me reflect on some things and change my perspective on a lot of things coming from the u.s i also took some pictures out there so like i said i'm gonna make a video on the photos that i took in film i just got those back hopefully they're not messed up because they did go through the scanner but yeah like the last day we were out there so we had some students from my school then we had like some senegalese students from the university over there like we was kind of in a class together they were like super helpful because they were there translating for us so like we was at the market and they trying to charge you 200 dollars for keychain or some crazy shit like that they know how to negotiate they know the language so it was cool that we had them and on the last day well actually all of them cooked us like a dinner but yeah it was it was great i always wanted to study abroad like because i like to travel period this was like a different type of experience because it was like we were actually with the families in their homes like most study abroad programs you kind of just um stay like in a dorm and you know go to school but it was like nah we was out there in in the village in the field getting work done at the cultural events with the people the experience was like way more intimate than a normal study abroad program but bro like if you're a college student and you want to travel and you know get some credits check out your study abroad office at your school like they probably have a bunch of opportunities but yeah man that was a little bit about my experience i'm gonna go a bit like a bit deeper in some of the experiences i had in the next video when i show you all the pictures that i took on my film camera so yeah man let me know if i left out like any questions that i had or you know some something specific that i probably didn't answer make sure y'all like and subscribe i have another trip coming up that i'm gonna be shooting on film super excited for that so stay tuned i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video peace